Most people's dream home looks like this. And if you're anything like me, that house just looks like a boatload of debt and something that's way too big for me to clean. And when I looked for a house, it took me a while to find something that had affordability, sustainability, and somewhere to express my creativity. So I decided to make one. This is the tiny house movement. It's for the people that love being different, being free, and appreciate the smaller things in life. If you guys don't know me, hi, my name is Tiffany, and this is my tiny house that I have been building for the past two years. So welcome to the YouTube channel where we share things like real estate investing tip, tiny house building, and living unconventionally. If you guys want to stick around, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. The first thing I did was watch like a million videos on YouTube. As I was doing all this research and watching these YouTube videos, I took a note paper and started jotting down everything that I love from certain houses and everything that I hated. I listed from top to bottom exactly what I couldn't live without like a walk-in closet and things that I don't need so much space for like food because I don't know how to cook. Once I felt like I knew enough about tiny houses I went ahead and I started designing it. To do this I used an app called Live Home 3D. It's very good for beginners and it gives you a rough idea of what everything is gonna look like. One thing that I didn't consider that I should have a little bit more is proportions and how high up things are gonna the be. The other software that I used was SketchUp. This is a little more advanced and you can get the free version on a computer but it's great for building custom furniture like I did for my walk-in closet. This is all fun and games, right? We're drawing, we're designing, we're building our house, and then comes the reality where we need to budget for this build. Now, don't get me wrong. I thought just because I was building a tiny house that it was gonna be a little less expensive. You still have everything that you have in a normal house. It's just condensed in a smaller space. Now, the trailer is the most important part. My trailer specifically had two 7,000 pound axles. It's 20 feet by 105 inches. And lastly, if you're gonna buy your own trailer, the one thing that I would have changed about mine is not to cheap out on the jacks that come already pre-installed. I had to manually do this from each corner and I did. One of the bricks broke and the tiny house almost went crashing. Now put on your working boots boys and girls because we're gonna get started on the frame of this tiny house. At this point I was a newbie. I was petrified. I was shaking and quaking in my boots girl. I did not know a single thing about how to frame a house so I had my dad's help. With those measurements and knowing where all the windows and doors were gonna be placed we started framing them out. We built little boxes for the doors and windows and then we bolted it into the trailer to make sure that she wasn't gonna go anywhere since this is thick these are 10 inch remember, bolts that we're gonna put in through the plywood and then there's gonna be the other frame right here obviously to build a movable house we have to use really sturdy materials so for the walls we use regular two by fours and we used half inch plywood to cover up all of the walls since we were buying a huge amount of lumber and this was back in like 2021 when lumber prices were super high we decided to open up a lowe's card so we would get five percent off of every single purchase we used some regular old tyvek wrap from lowe's just to make sure that everything on the outside was waterproof before we started putting on the siding. The most expensive part of the whole tiny house was purchasing doors and windows so we decided to head over to a local yard sale and this guy had a ton of options. Three windows here we got a little tiny one for the loft, the big black door that I absolutely love and then this window here for the back of the kitchen slash living room and they're all tempered glass which found out later that they didn't have to be all of my windows put together cost me a total of about 750 dollars because some of the windows didn't have flanges on them we decided to run over some tyvek tape over top of it and to make sure that we didn't have any creepy crawlies coming inside through the windows we used some spray foam just to make sure they were well isolated after weeks of going back and forth as to which material i'm going to use for the outside i landed on metal roofing now i chose this because i feel like it would be super durable semi easy to to work with and they already come in huge panels so we just have to cut out the little notches for the doors and windows not to mention it's super cheap and definitely costs a lot less than if i were to go with some traditional siding but it's not all good it does add extra heat to the build so you have to make sure everything is well isolated it's definitely a lot more difficult to make final finishing touches roofing was definitely straightforward you lay down the drip edge you add the waterproofing membrane and you screw in the new roof on top Electricity can be a very scary thing. We wired the whole house just like a regular one, but of course taking special protocols just because this is a tiny house, so it is going to be moved. Now, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I don't understand half of this stuff. The only thing that I know is that we have 220 volts max running the wire, which I think is pretty standard. And we had everything blueprinted as to where the outlets were gonna go, where the lights were gonna be. If this whole social media thing doesn't work out, I would 100% become a plumber. I Like when my dad was explaining to me the difference between CPVC pipe and PVC, 
PVC pipe and all the different drains and things, it all made sense. But as soon as someone talked electric to me, it seemed like they were talking a whole different language. We did run this under the tiny house because my plan later on is to spray from the bottom. That way everything is really well insulated and there's no chance of it freezing up. Now you don't just want to stick a hose to your house. Well, actually you're going to get an inlet off of Amazon and you're going to connect that through the little CPVC pipe. For the inside of this bad boy, we use regular R13 insulation. We do live in Florida, so I think this would be more than enough to keep the AC in and the cold out during the winters. I have seen a ton of people use spray foam. However, I opted not to do that because it was a lot more expensive, not DIY friendly, and it could make your house a lot more flammable. For the walls, instead of doing shiplap like everyone else, I decided to use this super thin plywood to give it a more minimalistic look. The hardest part of this whole thing was definitely dragging the giant panels inside and outside the tiny house because we got the measurement wrong 50 times. We're starting to work on the window trims. Never done window trims before. I have seen a few tutorials. So let's see how this goes. I did not watch a single YouTube video before starting this whole process, but honestly, I felt like it was a little bit of common sense, and now I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with the table saw in order to cut these all to the right size. I took a piece of one by five and started cutting it. That way it would fit in the measurements of the inside of the window. This is what we're working on today. We're doing the shower and the wall that's gonna separate the kitchen from the bathroom. It's gonna be a sliding door right here. Would this be a complete tiny house without a full functioning shower? Of course not. So we had to add in the walls for the bathroom. This featured a fiberglass shower, which I would definitely not recommend you get. The shower might seem pretty sturdy, but honestly, this whole fiberglass thing is so fragile, it came broken through the mail like three or four times. Once we had the shower installed, I had to go ahead and put in the sliding door just to frame around it. I vividly remember this day being so stressful because I couldn't get the measurements right, and not to mention I had to frame the wall and then lift it up and like screw it in so it had to stay put. I promise you it's probably not as hard as it seems. I feel like I was just having a bad day, but I eventually did get it done. I was also super proud of myself that I thought ahead of time because the AC is gonna go on this wall and I put in little two by four. Finally, my favorite and least favorite part of the whole build all at the same time. That's right, baby. We're painting this bad B. Now, the people at Sharon Williams recommended that I prime first and then paint and I'm pretty sure I didn't have the patience for that. So I just went ahead and painted it. However, if I were to go back and do this again, definitely prime your walls. You would think this would have taken me like two days to paint, but it took me a whole week just because I was procrastinating and the white paint wasn't covering the brown because I didn't prime it first. I decided to go with a crisp, cool toned white just to paint all over the tiny house because I feel like it's super easy to decorate around and it gives it a super minimalist look. Something about painting ceilings in a cramped space is just the worst and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. You guys can also see that I'm avoiding the back wall to the loft just because we're gonna add some super cool brick wallpaper. For the flooring, we decided to use vinyl plank because it was the easiest to install and it was super thin to go on the floor. This is a 20 mil product by Target and if you didn't know, vinyl is waterproof so I figured this would be great for the whole house because it's going in the bathroom and the kitchen as well. Since my husband works at a flooring store, I figured it would be a lot easier just to have him do this part because it would have taken me ages to learn how to do it properly. For the trim, we just used regular shoe molding just to finish off the edge and because it was very minimalistic and small and affordable. Here's where it gets challenging. I really wanted to carry on the flooring throughout the stairs. Oh, this little hack on YouTube where you could take a piece of vinyl and cut it roughly and then you use a heat gun in order to bend it and make your own stair noses so that's what I decided to do. We had a ton of wasted floor space in the loft so I decided to cut a piece out of the vinyl and make like a secret compartment that we're gonna hide under the mattress. I guess it's not so secret anymore but you guys get the idea. Now here in the kitchen particularly, obviously it's not finished. I need to install the countertop. It's this little edge here, you can see how it's hanging off. There's nothing under here. It's gonna be like a mini bar. I know you're probably like, Tiffany, only one person can fit there. Like we know you don't have any friends, but we're gonna have this little like pullout table. I'm gonna tuck underneath here. That way, whenever we want, I can just pull it out and we have a full-size bar that probably seat like two and a half people. The best part of this whole build was that I found $300 cabinets with soft closed drawers and they were black, literally the color that I had been looking for for ages. I did want to have gold hardware on the handles, however, I figured that would be a lot harder to find and a lot more expensive just because everything around the kitchen and the bathroom would have to match, so I just decided to keep it silver. To make the cabinets even better, we decided to use a giant 24 by 48 tile for the countertop that looked like marble, so we saved on weight and on the price. 
because this is a tiny house, I really needed a walk-in closet. If you guys didn't know, I do have another channel where I post fashion content, so I do have more clothes than the actual person. However, I try to be a little limiting because sustainability, you know what I'm saying? I built it in the stairs, having a place to put my jewelry. And my favorite is gonna be my shoe storage. I think as long as half of my closet fits, I would say that that's a win in my Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it as I'm sharing my tiny house journey with you guys here on my YouTube and over on my TikTok. If you guys wanna watch the shorts, you can keep up with every day that I work on the tiny house. And I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know down below in the comments which feature did I design that you guys have put in your tiny house. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Mwah.